behave more human. Now you might think of what is more human. Uh, we are young human beings, so what do you mean by more human? And to understand what does it mean, um, I along with few of my research colleagues, we conducted survey with 1378 people or let me say consulting or people who are working with machines and we interviewed them before they started the machine you know, learning projects or projects which they were doing for to develop systems and we asked them some very basic questions questions related to ethics, questions related to humanitarian, questions related to social science by the way, how many of us here have a background in ethics? Have you studied ethics in your... How many of you have? Okay. And how many of you have studied humanitarian? And how many of you have studied psychology? Think that you guys are going back to the society hoping that the masses that with whom you will interact should have, should be not biased, should have ethics, should be able to understand human values. We put the same question in front of this 1300 plus professionals, asking them why they are thinking before they program, what they, what they are thinking before they design such systems. And to our, we were not surprised, to our non surprise, they had no clue. Including me, I have never studied ethics. Means I did study ethics for one period at my business school when I was doing my MBA, and I got one in that because I completed my final school because it was optional. Yeah. But almost 92% of the professionals who are developing such systems, they have no background in ethics. They have no background in you know, psychology or human sciences. So we ask these questions to those people. We interviewed them and after a year and a half, when they were already done with one or two projects on such kind of machine learning artificial intelligence, we interviewed them again. And we asked them, do you feel enterprise? Does doing these projects help you to learn something about yourself, about human beings, about human behavior, about ethics? And you want to live out of this 1378 folks whom we interviewed. 1351 of them said that their perspective has completely changed. Now they understand what ethics mean, they understand what is human morale, then they understand human more than they were understanding in the past. So I would like to share with you some of the findings which we learned from this survey. How this machine, just looking at their own creation, how, how looking at their own algorithms, helps such people to learn more about human values, to learn more about human, and how they become, became more human by just working on projects where their intention was to teach the machines human values. By profession, I am a data scientist. I learn how to make machine learn human behavior. <laughs> yes, it is not obvious or not. Means I learn myself first to, to teach machines how to learn human behavior. So, the first thing that we, we, uh, we found out was before I jump into those uh, six uh, pointers. At the end of the day, we have to decide. It's never going to be us versus them. It's never going to be either or or. It's how do we look at this machine to help us to introspect, to help us to do retrospective of our own behavior so that we learn more about ourselves. So that we learn more about how to behave in ourselves. I think most of you would have heard about this, even seen in movies that when the soldiers from, you know, all, all the movie has to have in this place, you know, the, all the soldiers who return from Afghan war to back to the US, 
when they were interviewed by medicine professionals, they didn't complain of any problem, they said everything is fine, and after a few months or weeks, they were into you know, different kind of diseases and problems. So the health community of the US, they started developing different chatbots, you know, different uh, machines which can talk with people. And there was a survey conducted in the US where it says that 70% of soldiers who returned from such wars, they didn't, they were not courageous enough or they were not often enough in front of a medical officer to tell their problems, but they communicated to this chat board, to this machine, more openly about their problems. Is it not weird that a human being doesn't trust a human, doesn't feel comfortable to talk with a human being, rather it prefers to talk to a chat. This I found this subject to be very disturbing, yeah. And if I I would also do the same, yeah. I would feel the same if I talk about my mental problems to somebody, yeah. Why? Because you fear that person would judge you, would judge you. You know, you fear of this social evaluation. You fear that what C or D might think about you when you go out of the room after that. But machines don't have that. They don't do the glasses, yeah. If you, you leave the room, they don't talk to the other person and say, hey, you know what, this girl is a real player. No, they don't do that. <laughs> and that's the interesting aspect that we being a human cannot be cannot give our soldiers, soldiers to other human beings to listen and to understand the past. So the first learning for us from this survey was that. Machines do not judge. You go to them, you talk about your problem, they require your problem, and whatever has been prescribed, they tell you the solution for that. Now, why I am telling you this aspect is that it's a big learning for us. This machine, which is not judging you, is the machine which you have developed. So, either your creation is so good that you know, it exceeds your own performance, it exceeds your own expectation and if that's the case, be it, yeah? let's have more machines if the whole argument of having machine versus human is gone, yeah, they are better than us but the point I want to drive home here is that these machines are telling us if you want to be more human, if you want to be a human being <laughs> they are challenging our human being, why do you being a human being? If you want to be a human being, do not judge. Be open. Listen to the person. Listen what he or she has to say. Try to go into his or her feelings. Try to understand that before passing on any comments, before finding or telling any anything which might not be complete information. And this was one of the learning which came from all the from the survey which I am telling you. So it's nothing that we are giving a hypothesis. These are the results of our finding. The second one which we found very interesting was that what is not finding? So, for example, if I say paying equal salary for the same job to a female and a male will solve the problem of gender biases. Wow, yes, you are right. That's the problem because of which we have gender biases. We all have our own perspective. We have a binary look at the world. You know? We say this is right, that's wrong. We, we have this fixed you know, perception. And we have this bad thing called intuition. You know? Intuition is never powered with information. Intuition is what you feel or what you have heard or what, you, what a group of people have told you. And you start treating the whole world into binary. Yes? No. Either or. Oh, no equal salary, gender biases. Oh, there is no representation of women or, 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 or a, a, a colored skin man here or a, a person here. It's not diverse. But each of them has more meaning. You have to look for the data lineage. And this, this guy who was giving me this answer, he, he said, when I look at something in the mass, when I was designing the machines, I thought it should be either, either this or that. But when he started looking at the lineage of the data, you know, going deeper and deeper and deeper, he realized there is much more than black and white in this world. 
Of course, we have so many colors for sure, but it's not. So, okay. black and white is so deep, you have to go into that. So, the second learning which you can take back from a studio is that it's not always binary. You have to look at different perspectives. And the third one was more, uh, very interesting <laughs> because we have been talking this morning about diversity, we have been talking about different definitions of diversity. In machine learning, we have a concept called or an algorithm called random forest. You know? So I don't want to go into detail of the data. The intention is not to teach you machine learning. But the idea here is that you cannot have forest with single tree. To have a forest with multiple trees, correct? Similarly, when we talk of diversity, when we talk of human nature and we define diversity, each of us has a different definition of diversity and it totally depends upon how much diverse community you have seen. So if I ask, again not to generalize, if I ask somebody from Europe to define you what is diversity, he or she might tell the color, skin of the color, the ethnicity for example, or the sex, male, female, whatever. If I ask the same question from somebody from say, India for example, I really had all this tough time in the dining table trying to put my idea because I am a father, my dad, my, my grandfather there and in principle in our society you don't speak in front of elderly people. That's what diversity is. Diversity also means that each of us has equal opportunity to present our idea. So when I talk about diversity with different people from different diverse backgrounds, the definition of diversity changes. So does for the machines. The same machine if you operate here and the same machine if you operate somewhere else, it behaves as for the environment that is there. Again, these machines are what we have created, these machines are what we have designed. We have to look at it pragmatically. The fourth interesting aspect that came out in this survey was that you learn from what you observe. You learn from what you observe. You don't learn from what you see. Does it ring a bell or do you think that I'm saying the grammar? You know, other, other use for other Most of us, most of us have a habit of seeing the things. We don't observe. We we just see things. So oh, that's brown. Oh, that's red, that's white. We just see. And as, as soon as you see, you start correlating with whatever you have seen in the past. The moment you start observing, the moment you start being more empathetic to that particular thing which you are observing, you find out the context of that particular object that you are seeing. And the moment you start putting it into context, you understand that person much better. What is missing and what was very evident during this uh, uh, corona crisis was that people who started observing, people who started that okay if this person was working like a day laborer and if you don't because of corona he or she cannot perform her day job, he or she might need additional support, he or she might need financial support. And that would have only happened when you have started observing people, started looking at their pain points, started looking at what are the different challenges that these people is facing in his or her day life. So don't see the thing, try to observe, try to put into a context. That will give you a better understanding of what that person, what that human being is going to do. That's what machines do. They observe different data sets. They observe in which environment they are put into to, to operate. And based on that environment, based on the data set that they provided, you see that machine performing. The next point which was also interesting was, and this is, I always have done this mistake in the past, was Normally you talk to one or two people and then you think, okay, that's it. Now I'm in Germany. I know how people in Germany are. I know everything about Germany. I'm an expert on that. Please 
please, please refrain from generalizing. Just to give an example, so since I come from India, so most of my examples are either from India or from Germany. The North India, the northern, northern part of India, is drastically different than the southern part of India. And if, just to give you know, if, how many of you are food lovers? Who likes to eat? Come on. <laughs> you all like to eat, yeah? This is, you might not like to cook, but you like to eat food, yeah? <laughs> if someone can cook, why not, yeah? <laughs> Many, most of you who have uh, who know about Indian food will say, okay, chicken curry or naan, that's what you mostly think of, yeah? But that basically is not Indian food, sorry. We have a completely different you know, recipe on the south. And if you travel from the northmost part of India, there's a food pattern, you know? You get more sweet, more curry, and more naan. When you come in the between of India, in the daytime, the people eat rice and in the night they eat naan as you go down 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 southmost they eat rice both the time you should thank me for this extra knowledge that i'm giving up <laughs> <laughs> so what i'm trying to bring there is that you should not generalize you know? every time you go deeper and deeper you learn more about the people by the way by the way i come from uh, in North East part of India, yeah? so this I also like Chinese food because we are the border of China. Yeah? So, curry in Chinese food, oh, <laughs> <laughs> so don't try to generalize, try to look more deeper into it, and that will help you to understand the person much better. And the last one, which was very you know, interesting for us, was that most of us, most of us, and when I say most of us, including me for sure. Yeah? Is whatever I'm sharing with you is my own experience, you know. I, I went into these questions because I had the same problem, you know. I started coding things without knowing what is you know, psychology or what is ethics. So whenever you see anything, the first guinea pig was me, yeah. I tried it my, on myself and then I tried it for people. Most of us, we always start competing. Oh, that session was better than this session. Oh, but this, you know, I went to the last days and we have this amazing story. You start competing, you start comparing, and that's the mistake that we keep doing. I know it's very easy to say, especially from for you, it will be very surprising to, to hear this from uh, somebody from India because we are one of the most competitive countries. You know, where you are, you know, if you score ninety nine percent in your tenth mark or in your school, you might not get into a college because somebody will score ninety nine point nine or something. But the whole idea is that you have to cooperate. And Corona crisis, during Corona crisis, we had the initial hiccups where you know, countries were producing medicines and they, they were not sharing with other countries, they were talking about the patent, they were talking about some different things. But we realized that even there are five people who are affected, say, far Southeast Asia or in, in Africa, Germany is not safe because somehow it will travel from there to here. So, what we needed was we needed to go. We needed to share the, the formula, we needed to share the medicine with each other. So cooperation is very much required. Again, why this pop up here? Because in all these machines that we design, we try to optimize the resources. We try to make use of different resources in a proper proportion. We these machines among themselves, they they cooperate. So these were the six key findings which I had from this you know, survey which I did with uh, this uh, in our study. And finally we concluded that it's not about what machines can learn. It's about what you want to teach to this machine. And is this teaching or the learning that you are trying to give it to machine? Are they going to create more self-awareness? Are they going to question you as a person that are you a better human? And everyone, that's all from my side. <laughs>